work on creating um, linear equations from graphs. Okay. So we have two linear equations here. This is, uh, we'll number them. This will be our line one, and this guy will be our line two. Now, the original question just asks us to solve the system of equations, which really all that means is where's the point of intersection? Do you know what the point of intersection is on these two lines? Two, two. Yeah, that's right. This point right here at two and two. So really, that's it. That's all they want from us. But what we're going to do is we're going to go a little farther. We're going to prove this. Excuse me. And what we're going to do is we're going to find the linear equation from both of these and then solve using like our substitution, elimination, or putting in those values. So for line one, linear equations are written as y equals mx plus b, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, b is our y-intercept. Okay. Okay. So our y-intercept in this one here is at... Looks like negative 2. Okay, so we're going to replace b with the value of negative 2. Okay, so y equals mx minus 2. The other thing is m. m is the slope of a line. Now, in order to find the slope of a line, we need two distinct points. So we know we have a point here and another point here. What we can do to find slope, do you remember the slope formula? That's right, rise over run, and they give you a specific formula, and they usually write it as y2 minus y1, because y's deal with rise, and x2 subtract x1. So you need two coordinates. You need coordinate 1 and coordinate 2. So let's label these coordinates. This one here is going to be at 0 and negative 2, okay? and the other one's at 2 and 2. So we have 0, negative 2, and 2 and 2. So let's call this maybe x1 y1, x2, y2. Okay, so let's call it that. So, when we go to plug it into our slope formula, well, m is equal to, y2 is the value of 2, subtract y1 is negative 2. So this is a little tricky. It's 2 subtract negative 2. So we might need to take a calculator out for that one. Okay, And then on the bottom we have x2 subtract 0. It's a little simpler. 2 subtract negative 2, do you know what it's going to give you? 2 negative 2. It should give you a value of 4. Okay, so we've got to make sure we're typing it in properly. And then the other value, 2 subtract 0, is a value of 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So what that means is our m is a value of 2, which means... In our formula, formula of that line is y is equal to 2x minus 2. So there's our formula, okay? We've just found it, but that's for line number one. We just found it, okay? So we had to find the slope, and we had to find the y-intercept. So this is the equation of this line. If we were given this line, we'd be able to recreate that equation that we called number one. Now, number two is a little more difficult. The problem with number two is our y-intercept. Can you tell us exactly where that one is? This one was pretty obvious. It crossed right at that point. Yeah. But this one here, it's some decimal number, and it's pretty difficult to figure out what it is, mm -hmm. right? We can find the slope, so we're going to start with that. Okay, we have Two and two is one point, and it looks like this would be another major point here. What coordinate is that? 5 and 1. one. Okay, so we're going to use those two to find the slope. And we'll do it in blue here. So our two coordinates were 5 and 1 and 2 and 2. Okay, remember slope is y, m is equal to y2 subtract y1 divided by x2 subtract x1. So let's try to follow along with your calculator. Okay. We can name either point, point 1 and point 2. So we'll call this guy maybe x1, x2. Sorry, not x2, y1. y1. Okay. x1, y1. And this will x2, y2. And that can be tricky in itself, just setting that up. Okay, so our y2 is a value of 2. Subtract our y1, which is 1. Okay. Divided by x2, which is a value of 2, minus x1, which is 5. Okay. So 2 subtract 1 is 1. 2 subtract negative 5 is actually negative 3. So the slope of this, we're going to leave it like a fraction. So this is where it gets a little more difficult, is negative 1 over 3. So remember our line equation is y equals mx plus b. Well, we know m. 
m is negative a third. Okay, we can replace m. But we still have x plus b. We've got to find b. And now we said b was really hard to find. So instead of just pointing like we did at the last one saying that's where b is, this one we can't tell, we're going to just take another coordinate along the line. Okay, and here's a point right here. And it could be anywhere along this line. Negative 1 and 3, it looks like. Okay? The reason I'm taking that is just so we have something different. Negative 1 and 3. We could have used any of the other two points we had. Remember that this stands for an x value and a y value, which means I can replace x and y with them to solve for b. Does that seem familiar? Yeah. 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 So let's replace y with 3. Negative a third times x being negative 1 plus b. Great. Okay, so 1 third times negative 1, well, 1 times anything is the same number. Yeah. But because it's a negative times a negative, we're going to get positive. positive. Okay. And the goal is we got to get b by itself. So we want to move a third, and it's positive now to the other side. So this is going to read 3 subtract 1 third. So we've got to remember our fraction rules here. This part gets a little difficult. Do you remember fraction rules at all? Um, somewhat. Yeah. You can probably type this into your calculator, if you have, especially if you have a fraction calculator. Just 3 subtract negative, or sorry, 3 subtract the third. Okay. And I'm going to tell you what it is, just to kind of speed this up. It's going to be 2 and 2 thirds as a mixed fraction. Or they write it as 8 over 3. So kind of, you know, not the roundest of numbers, but just to speed things up. So you kind of go back to your fraction stuff if you want. So what that means is our b value is, and we're going to write it as an improper fraction, 8 over 3. So we had our slope, which is negative a third. So y equals negative 1 third x plus 8 over 3. Okay? So I know in this question we said we were going to, prove it, and we can. So I'm going to prove it by just plugging values into them instead of doing substitution or elimination. And the reason being is this is, we have the point, so it'll be most efficient if we just plug this point into our two equations, this one and this one down here. We'll write them beside each other so it's easy to see. And just make sure that they work, okay? Substitution and elimination will become a little more difficult with fraction. So let's write the other equation, which was y equals... 2x plus 2, correct? Yeah. So that was equation 1 in red, and this is equation 2. We said our point of intersection was 2 and 2, so we're going to test this. Make sure this is correct. So that means we replace y and x in both equations with the value of 2, right? So we're going to get 2 equals negative a third x times 2 plus 8 over 3. So that one I want you to try to solve with the calculator, and I'll do the one on the left here. 2, oops, I want to write that in green. 2 equals 2, <laughs> a lot of 2's in this one, times 2 plus 2. Okay. Does your calculator add fractions? Um, I don't no? so. Okay. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll help you out with the fractions here. This is 2. When you're multiplying a whole number times a fraction, we've got to turn the whole number into a fraction. And we multiply top by the top and the bottom by the bottom. Now, it's going to be a negative times a positive, so we're going to get a negative answer. And 1 times 2 is 2, and 3 times 1 is 3. Okay. And I know this part's a little tricky. You don't have to know all of it right now. Plus 8 over 3. Well, the lucky part here is our fraction denominators are the same, so we can add them. Usually when we're adding subtract fractions, we have to have denominators that are the same. So essentially, what is negative 2 plus 8? Can you do that in your calculator there? Yep. 6. 6. So we have 6, and the denominator stays the same, over 3. So if you're confused again, go over your fraction rules. And what is 6 divided by 3? 2. 2. So that one checked out. And let's just test our other one. 2 is equal to... Did I write this wrong? Oh, I did. It should be negative 2. Sorry. Quickly did that. This equation was negative 2. So let's quickly get this in here. 2 times 2 is 4, minus 2. And what is 4 minus 2? 
So that one also checked out. Okay? So even though we found the point of intersection just by looking at the graph, we checked it by finding their equations and plugging those numbers in, and they work. That is the point of intersection between those two values. Okay?